So one, when one looks at the um, African automotive industry, literally only South Africa in the south and Morocco in the north play a role. Uh, in between there is absolutely no manufacturing depth and uh, evidence of automotive production. Um, but that comes at a reason and whenever you look at uh, the reasons, um, one finds out that um, with political will these reasons can be taken away. Now, biggest point is that there is an importation of used vehicles at, at large scale, specifically from Japan on the east coast and uh, from the US and Canada on the west coast. Um, and one would think that uh, like a country like South Africa um, with an existing auto industry imports zero used vehicles. So these countries could do the same. So it, it's literally political will that could unhinge this. Um, then the second one is fuel quality. Um, most African countries have horrible fuels. Uh, we talk about high manganese uh, content in fuel, uh, you talk about sulfur and diesel, you talk about um, the issue that uh, octane levels are extremely low. Um, but when you look a little deeper, uh, you find out that um, almost all African countries import their fuel from the Middle East. So it is all about the right specs on, on the order. You could actually um, get better fuel, which in the case of Kenya has happened by changing the specs. So also, most African countries, um, people cannot afford a, to buy a vehicle up front, say $20,000, um, and uh, there's literally no financing available in these countries. In South Africa, about 80 to 85% of the vehicles we sell here are financed. So this point can be addressed by uh, vehicle financing. There are institutions all through Africa uh, and beyond who would uh, be happy to uh, take on this topic. So it's a structural element that we can really uh, address. Plus, um, mobility or shared mobility could be a solution of affordability. Not everybody needs to own a vehicle, but a lot of people need transport to go from A to B. The third step then will be what we call Pan-African Auto Pact. That means you have um, collaboration between the bigger uh, regional blocks like ECOWAS in the west, uh, SEDEC in the south and ESE in the east plus Ethiopia. Um, that would give you immediate trading and accept mutual acceptance of uh, local content and of value add, um, similar to the North American Auto Pact between Canada, US and uh, Mexico. And the fourth step, which is the ultimate one, is the African Continental Free Trade Area. Um, free trading of goods and services and, and movement of people um, between 54 countries and uh, um, one point whatever billion people going to two billion people in the short run. So that's where the, the future lies and we believe in, in AAAM that we are on the trajectory. Now is the time to create the foundation for this work.